What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. It looks like yesterday the embargo lifted for the Switch Lite impressions and previews. We kind of talked about this previously. I was talking to people and was finding out a little bit of information, but we had all kinds of different impressions and previews on this uh, handheld only Switch. Wanted to go over a few of the bigger points and also link you guys over in the sources below to some of the very in-depth looks and impressions and stuff. So you can kind of get an idea if this is a system you want to buy. I know there's still some people on the fence, so I just wanted to point out a few things on the system just in case it's either your first Switch or it's your second one or something. And some interesting remasters, like really interesting HD remasters. One that are, I would say out of left field, but uh, it could be really, really good. We're gonna go over all of that and more today, guys. As always, enjoy these videos. Make sure you hit the like button. It does help out and get subscribed. Stay up to date on all the different gaming news going around. Do this every weekday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time. And we're gonna start today with that Mega Man Zero ZX collection. We already talked about this coming out uh, later on in January, January 21st, 2020. Gonna include six different Mega Man games. The four of the Mega Man Zero games for the Game Boy Advance, then also ZX and ZX Advent that was on the DS. And we got a bit more information about this game overall. One, it's coming out on all platforms. Remember before it was leaked onto the PlayStation 4 store and we weren't really sure. We, we kind of thought it was gonna be on everything because Capcom tends to do that with their games, but just to be sure they put out a full press release. Uh, we had some, uh, some fact sheet that went out and it said, all platforms. So PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC at the end of January for $29.99. And it looks like there's also going to be a physical copy. So it'll be digital and physical. Now will everything be on the cartridge for the Switch version? We'll have to wait a little longer to see if it's like part on the cartridge than, you know, part of a code. I think they're gonna fit everything on a cartridge because I don't think those games are gonna take up that much space, but we've seen them balloon some of their other games uh, and have to put in a little code there, although I think that's more about splitting up the different SKUs. Either way, I'm excited. It's looking very, very good. The trailer looks great, and I'm ready to get back to Mega Man Zero at the end of January. We also got a little bit more information about Astral Chain. The game is looking really good. We saw the Metacritic scores, already talked about those, but it sounds like they're putting little, little touches of detail and stuff in there. It's gonna be very, uh, I think, fun. One of them has to do with a 16-bit game or a 16-bit mode of a game that was put in there as kind of an Easter egg because they're asking us to go find it, but this is actually something from the director on the game saying, there are a variety of missions in Astral Chain, including a hidden 16-bit style mini game. I like a lot since you can feel some nice nostalgia while you recover mentally from uh, all the fighting. I hope you'll try to find it. Now, I'm thinking this is gonna be part of like the hub world or the station that you're at. Maybe there's like an arcade machine somewhere around it. I haven't played the game yet, so I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm thinking it might be something along that line where you find an arcade machine, you can play this 16-bit Minigame, again, I have to see what that's all about, but I like the little, little touches of detail just to kind of make the world feel a bit more alive, if that's what it is. I mean, it could also be hidden in like a menu or something and that's how you find it, but we've seen this before in other games like Donkey Kong 64 had like an arcade uh, thing you could find to play older Donkey Kong games and we've seen it in Doom and stuff. So it could be and that would be really neat to have just as an extra thing in the world. Also, do you remember Ashen that was out uh, last December on the Xbox One? It actually had Game Pass. I remember downloading it and I thought, okay, this is, this is an all right action RPG. It was kind of fun. Uh, but then Smash Bros, I think, came out like the next day and Ashen went on hold for a while and I uh, kind of forgot about it after that. But it is coming to all platforms now. It's going multi-platform pretty much right at the beginning of December. And I looked at it and I thought about it. I said, wait a minute, it's coming to all platforms December 9th. It released December 8th last year on the Xbox One and the Epic Game Store, if you remember. So... This looks like a game that is going to be uh, finishing up its exclusivity deal in the Epic Store, and there's not a lot of games that have done that yet at this time. This could be one of the first that finished its exclusivity deal on the Epic Game Store because it is coming to Steam and GOG as well as the PlayStation 4 and the Switch. So Ashen, okay game. I think more or less people will look at that as saying, oh, it's a game that released on the Epic Game Store and here it is now going to DRM free stuff like GOG, but it could also find a, a, second, a second life, if you will, on something like the Switch where indie games do fairly well. We'll see how it performs there, of course. Uh, that's gonna be right at the beginning of December, December 9th. And guys, some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's talk about the Switch Lite. It's a system I'm looking forward to because 
It's more hardware, I guess. I mean, I, I got the new Switch and it's not that different, but it was still fun to get, you know, a new Switch and open it up, check it out. But this is gonna be a completely different form factor inside. And I wanna see if the build quality changes. And that was something I was very interested with these impressions. Now, again, several impressions. There were things, uh, what, Daily Star, Polygon, Kotaku, Engadget. I think the best one that I saw though was probably from Game Explain. Now, look, I might be partial because it's on YouTube and I prefer to kind of listen to people explain their experiences, especially if it's in like a, like, like someone's asking them questions about it. But I think they may have had uh, the best one that I saw yesterday when I was going through them. Definitely, I think the most information. Uh, so I would check that one out first, to be honest, just because they had some good info there. And they have other videos with size comparisons and everything seems to be almost about the size of the Switch without the Joy-Cons on the side, so almost size of the tablet itself, but there were several different things to go through with it. The biggest one is because it is all one piece, and you don't have the Joy-Cons sliding on the side, on and off and everything where you kind of flex it, it feels very, very sturdy. Now, I think it also might be slightly thinner and the plastics could even be harder, but it feels like one solid piece, as it should, and it looks like there will be full gyro support and everything, which I think is something most of us expected, but just in case it is there, we also got word that the D-pad itself feels like an actual D-pad. So we've seen the Joy-Con controllers where we change them out with the shell and put a different D-pad in there and all four directions will click. This seems more in line with the Pro Controller, although it sounds like it might be a bit more of a stiffer D-pad, so it feels like a true D-pad and not necessarily like the Pro Controller where you push all four buttons down and everything. I like what I'm hearing with that because it sounds like this might be the one to get the system if you're really into the platformer specifically around indie games. Now, of course, no, no uh, video out, to play on the TV, so you have to keep that in mind. And I do hope that someday Nintendo releases a Joy-Con that has a D-pad on it, similar to what we're hearing with the Switch Lite. I'll find out more information when I get the Switch Lite myself. And it does, again, sound like the buttons will be mushy like the ABXY, similar to what we see on the Pro Controller, so not really clicky or anything. Game Explain also managed to point out that there's no auto brightness. So I'm not sure how much of a deal breaker that would be for people, but most likely what happened there is they took the sensor out to either save for money or they decided that it just wasn't really that necessary in focus groups or testing where people just didn't really use auto brightness that much. Now we also hear that the analog sticks feel the same, which <laughs> that'll be fun to see how that go goes over. I Several places said that they don't feel that different. They don't look that different which tells me they're probably not different. It's probably the same analog stick and that will be fun to see how that goes over. Hopefully it's not hard to change out. That's the big thing I'm hoping is that to get to the analog stick, if it gets to that point, you can fix it yourself if you need to. And again, we'll figure all of that out. Maybe I'll even do a video just as a guide to change out your analog sticks in your Switch Lite so you don't have to just buy you know, a whole new one. The other interesting thing that I saw that was uh, a bit off-putting somewhat are that the speakers, and Nintendo's done this before, the speakers are actually moved to the bottom. So instead of projecting sound at you, it projects downwards, which I was a bit surprised by that because that will muffle the sound. And two different places mentioned that. Uh, one of them, again, being Game Explain, who again, I thought their video was probably the best terms of information on it. The sound is lower, which again has to do with that speaker placement. At least they didn't put it where you'd have your hands, like on the back or something, but still putting it on, on the bottom and projecting down, you're probably gonna wanna just keep some headphones around when you're using it, even by yourself, so you get that experience. Although I feel like most people do. Still though, to have the speakers that are already kinda low, be even lower, is a shame. But all in all, it sounds like for a budget $200 system that gets your foot in the door for the the, vi the growing Switch library. We're getting to the point now where there's just too many Switch games, right? Like by the end of the holiday, we'll have an obscene amount and to get your foot in the door for $200 or possibly buy another one for your household for maybe your, your kids or something, seems right now like a good value, but I'll find out more next month, September 20th, when it releases, same day as Link's Awakening. So, well, it, might as well stack that on top too. Next up, let's talk about some interesting HD remasters that appear to be happening. Do you remember The Lion King and Aladdin from the 16-bit era, specifically from the Super Nintendo or the Sega Genesis? I remember Lion King, 
vividly because I was so mad at that game when I was little. It was a harder game at the time, specifically if you were younger and you're trying to play through it. I think a lot of it had to do with the, I wanna say poor, I guess, detection when you're trying to jump on different platforms, specifically the logs that were going down the waterfall. That was the worst in the Lion King. And the, what's even worse than that is after that level is when you actually turn into an adult and things become fun because you could just swat at the hyenas and actually fight back rather than run away or try to jump on them from like above. But anyway, yes, it looks like these are both being remastered as one pack on the Xbox, the PlayStation 4, and the Switch. Originally, it was posted by a Twitter user, which was then removed, and then Game Explain managed to get the scoop on it and actually had a photo sent over that you're seeing here of the box art. And this is from, and again, this is really funny because people still have a hard time believing this, the GameStop Expo. Anyway, you can see the, the Switch, PS4, and Xbox One versions of the Lion King and Aladdin bundle coming this fall. I believe October is what's being talked about now. And I'm also curious about the uh, version of Aladdin as the Super Nintendo and the Genesis versions are different. So I assume we'll get one or the other. Maybe they'll throw both in there. Um, otherwise, uh, I don't know, you take your pick. I've heard Super Nintendo seems to be the one that's in, but uh, I'm sure there'll be a nice little battle as to which one's better. Anyway, I played the Super Nintendo one specifically, although I remember renting it on the Genesis one back in the day when I had my Genesis, but then I got a Super Nintendo and actually bought it for the Super Nintendo with Lion King. Uh, and anyway, interesting remaster. I would have never thought that something like this would happen. And the GameStop Expo, by the way, is something they do every year anyway, where store managers, regional, district managers, all these people go out and they just have one big convention. It feels like a waste of money probably for GameStop, but they do it anyway. And it seems like people have fun. So there's that, I guess. I mean, there's some cool announcements here. They showed like some footage of The Last of Us 2 that I assume is gonna get published publicly in the coming days. So there are some cool announcements. This one was definitely out of left field though. Next up, let's talk about Sony doing a strange update for the Vita. It's a system I thought they just forgot about and they didn't really care much about but they keep releasing updates. Specifically, it seems to be they release updates when there is some sort of hack or exploit that comes out. One in particular, as you're seeing here, was tweeted out. This one's from Andy Nguyen, who says, surprise, H Encore Squared released for PlayStation Vita firmware 3.71. And then following up, mentioning that firmware 3.72 came out, which they believed uh, blacklisted that exploit. However, they came back and said it didn't necessarily blacklist it, but they're still gonna keep an eye on it and continue working with firmwares that Sony keeps releasing for uh, stability. Because your feet, I guess, you know, will fall over if you stand it up. I don't know, It's it, Sony is weird. I guess they're like, hey, it still technically connects to our PlayStation network, so we have to keep an eye on it. That's all I can imagine. That's it. Maybe the day they cut it off completely from the PlayStation store, they just stop caring. But I guess for now, they feel like they have to update to kind of get away from exploits that are currently being put on the system. This one in particular, was native. Uh, apparently you didn't even need a game for it. I haven't done this with a Vita that I have or anything, but you can just do it natively and boom, it's hacked. So I guess I could see why Sony might say, you know what, we should probably do something about that. It's just weird because they don't say that in regards to games, just user exploits. And our last bit of news, let's talk about Super Mario 64, just in a different way than you might be expecting. Uh, even though it's a very old game from the Nintendo 64, people still love this game. And what's very interesting about this one in particular, we talked about it a while ago, how the source code was being decompiled and there were plans to release it publicly, at which time I said, we would probably start to get some really cool stuff. Well, it looks like the ball is now rolling on that idea as it has been released publicly. I won't be linking to it because I'm sure Nintendo is not far behind on this one, but it has been put out there. Several people have been checking it out and you might be wondering, what can this do? Well, let's say you have a Dreamcast. Someone could technically port the game to the Dreamcast to run natively, not through an emulator. And that's where things become very interesting as people can then take the game and start playing around with it. They can add some quality of life stuff to it. They can maybe change out different elements in the game and they can at that point take it and port it to pretty much anything that can run it. Doom gets run on everything, right? That's a great example. Quake? Quake goes to everything at this point. Doom is like the challenge. Uh, we've even seen Diablo. Uh, Modern Vintage Gamer has taken Diablo and moved it to all kinds of stuff. So think about it that way. Mario 64 can be ported without the need 
for an emulator. Something that at times can get in the way because you always get these weird glitches and performance issues. If you take something like Super Mario 64, move it over and design it specifically for like Windows, for example, it'll probably run better and you can have all kinds of cool features that the person uh, who programs and develops for it can add in. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna be curious if Nintendo swoops in and takes this thing out because it seems like something the Nintendo Ninjas would be deployed for. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day. This one is from Nico A saying, support for the 3DS may be fading away, but it doesn't save it from me buying one. And I will say this, the 3DS yeah, it's pretty much becoming legacy at this point. I think a 2DS XL is still a good pickup if you've never had one before. And you look at that library because the library is massive. It really is. Like there are so many good games and keep in mind, it also plays all of the DS games and you can go on for so long. I mean, if even if you just look at the Pokemon lineup from all the way back with some of the first ones on the DS up to some of the last ones on the 3DS, there are an obscene amount of games. So I would say if you've never had a, a DS, go pick up a 2DS XL, I would say right now, just to have it because eventually they will discontinue it. And there's a good chance that some of those games might get discounted anyway to make room for stock. And that's when you strike, when the games go to like five bucks a pop. Seriously, even like the first party Nintendo games are already becoming cheap. I saw a Link Between Worlds for like 15 bucks at my Target the other day. That is an absolute steal. So yeah, I would go get a 2DS XL. Keep in mind, you can also get them off of Nintendo's own refurbished site for a hundred bucks a pop, even the Pokeball edition if you want, or the, the orange and white one. Uh, I think they even have just the, the blue and black one on there. Pick it up and then get ready for the games as they get discounted. Maybe even look into it now because the library is solid. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button really helps us out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's the Switch Lite impressions. Doing a lot of Switch Lite coverage here, mostly because it's new hardware and I'm, I'm pretty interested in it, to be honest. And it's coming up pretty soon. It's, uh, what, just, uh, three and a half weeks or so, it should be out alongside Link's Awakening in the middle of September when things are gonna be hectic with games in the first place. Let me know if you're picking it up and what you thought about the impressions that are going around. Again, I'll leave links down in the sources if you wanna go read a bit more or listen a bit more about the Switch Lite. Also, what about these HD remasters? Lion King and Aladdin? This is, you never know what's gonna pop up, right? And that's why we get so excited about things like Nintendo Directs. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.